Today we're going to be looking into the wonderful world of reactions and everything we can get our bot to do in terms of reactions, in terms of our bot reacting to messages, detecting reactions from other users and so much more. Hi friends, it's James and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So as I just said, we're going to be looking at reactions and everything we can get our bot to do with them. So stay tuned because you're going to learn a lot. However, just before we jump in, I just want to quickly say that apologies for not uploading over the last couple of weeks. I've been away and haven't had time at all to create any videos. However, hopefully I'm back now and you can expect the weekly videos to be back. Also, secondly, I've mentioned this loads of times in my past episodes. However, if you haven't seen any of those, then I've got a Discord server. So if you've got any problems, please do consider joining and we'd love to help you out. Or if you don't have any problems, just feel free to join anyway. We'd love to have you. Anyway, let's get started now. So in the last episode, we looked into cogs. And as you can see here, this massively tidied up our whole workflow, our whole setup for our code. For example, our main file now is only 28 lines of code, when before it was over 300 lines. And we did that by separating it into all of these different files called cogs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch that video and it'll explain everything. Anyway, today we're not looking into cogs, we're looking into reactions and everything we can get our bot to do with them. So then I'm just going to put this inside of the greetings cog. So all of this reactions that I'm going to be showing you today, I'm just going to put inside of the greetings cog. It's not technically a greeting, but I just think it's where it should go for today. So what are we going to be looking at first? Well, the first thing that we want to be looking into is just getting our bot to detect when a user gives a reaction to a message. And well, how do we do that? Well, with anything in Discord PY, there is a function that will do this for us. And this function is called onReactionAd. It's quite self-explanatory when a user adds a reaction, this function gets called. This, well, so let's, let's get into the code of it. So we want to create a, an event, a listener in our case, because a listener is what we use when we're inside a cog. And a listener is like an event. Well, it is an event, yes, but it's just the cog version of it, if that makes sense. So yeah, again, as I said before, if you don't understand that, go back and watch my cog video. So then let's go ahead and create an event. So we do that by just doing command.cog dot, I can't spell, dot listener. Oops, dot listener. And now we need to define the function I was just talking about. So that's async def and then on underscore reaction underscore add. And into this, we need to pass in a few parameters. Well, we first need to pass in self and that's because we're inside of this cog. We now then need to pass in reaction and user. And that's everything we need to pass in. Whenever a user reacts to a message, this function gets called and we can now do anything we want when it gets reacted. So let's say someone reacts to a message, you could assign them a role, for example. So let's say you have, so let's say, for example, you send a message on your server, say react to this message if you want to become administrator. Whenever any user reacts to that message, it would, and you have a bot running, it would call this function. So you could then write some code. So it would assign that user who reacted to that message with the role of administrator. I hope that makes sense in what we're doing. However, today we're just going to be getting it to send a simple reply. So to do this, we first need to get the channel that the message was sent in. So to do this, we do channel is equal to reaction.message dot channel and that's how we get the channel that the reaction was sent in that was reacted to a certain message and now let's just send a response so let's go await channel dot send and now let's pass in user dot name and then let's just create a very simple string saying like that so what I've done here is I've made it send a message in the channel that the user reacted to in. And then what we've got it to do is we're going to send the user's name, so the user who reacted it. Then we're going to send a string added and then the emoji they reacted. It'll make more sense when we run it. So yeah, let's go ahead and run it and see what it's like. Okay then, let's send a message first. So let's just say hello. 
There we go, nothing special. The bot doesn't need to do anything because we haven't got a command set up for that, which is rightly so. But now let's react to this message. So let's just give it the laughing emoji. And look at this here, our bot has detected that we have reacted to this message and it sent a message saying crazy boy added a laughing emoji because that is my Discord username and then the added and then a laughing emoji. See, that's exactly what we wanted it to do. But what can we do now? What other things can we get our bot to do in terms of reactions? However, I just want to reiterate this again. You don't have to get your bot to send a message like this. You can get your bot to do anything. Like the example of adding a role to a user, like the administrator role. Or maybe you could do something else. Like maybe, let's just say you send a message and say anyone who reacts to this will get a free pizza sent to their house. And so a user reacts to it. You could write some code where it gets like a user's address, I don't know, goes to Domino's, puts in an order for a pizza and sends it to a user. You see where I'm going here. It's basically limitless if you see what I'm saying. Anyway, now let's look at another function that we can do in terms of reactions. Let's look into getting our bot to detect when a user unreacts from a message. So let's say, again, going back to the example of like the administrator role, let's say in like two weeks time, a user unreacts from that message saying that they don't want to be administrator anymore. Well, then you could get your bot to get, you could write some code to remove that administrator role from the user. You see where I'm going here. So let's do this. Let's write this code. So instead of writing this all out again, because it's basically the same, we, should, we can just copy this and then we can paste it down here below. However, we only need to change a couple of things. We need to change the name of this function because it's not an on underscore reaction add. It's on underscore reaction remove. I, I'm sure you could have guessed that. It's quite self-explanatory in what it would be. Again, we just need to pass in self reaction and user. And again, we need to keep a channel name. But because it would make no sense in terms of our send message, let's just change it to removed here just to make it a bit more... Uh, uh, relatable to the actual function that it's doing. So let's run it and let's test it out. Okay then, so let's send a message. So let's say we send a message and then we want to react to it. So let's give it the thumbs up. And you can see here our bot has detected that we have reacted to it and it sent a message like we just went over. But now watch this, if I remove the reaction, it sends a message saying I removed the thumbs up. You see where I'm going here? That is what that does. And that is a pretty cool thing you can do. And as I said, again, it's limitless in terms of what you could get your bot to do here. As in, as I said, removing the administrator role, just for an example. You see where I'm going here. And I hope everything we've just gone over makes perfect sense. So then, let's move on to something else we can do. Let's look into getting our bot to actually react to messages itself. So maybe you want to get your bot to react to a message with a thumbs up. That's an example of what we can do. So let's look into how we can do this. And the way we're going to look into this is by getting our bot to detect when a user sends a certain message. So let's just say the user sends a message saying happy and the bot will detect that you sent the word happy and it will send a reaction emoji to that message. Let's look into how we can do that. So again, we just want to create an event. So let's just do that just like we have done previously. And I've misspelled that as usual, as we've learned on this channel that I cannot spell. Anyway, now let's create the function. And we, what we're going to do here first is we're going to be using the on message function. And well, that's because, oh, and well, I've gone over that in previous episodes. So go back and check those out if you don't understand what that does. But a very brief overview, it detects when a user sends a certain word in a message. So let's do that. So let's go for the example of the happy thing that we were going for. So, like, so let's set up the function. So as we normally do, and let's define the function on message. And we need to pass in self and message. And now we first want to make sure that um, it, we first now need to create a very small if statement to detect if the bot sent that message because we don't want the bot reacting to itself. So to do this, we just do if message.author is equal to self.client.user and then return. So let's, let's, so let me quickly explain what this does. If the message that was sent in a channel contains the words happy and it was sent by the bot for some reason, nothing will happen. It will just return out of this function. Hope that makes sense. Basically, it's just preventing our bot from reacting to itself. 
So now let's look into getting our bot to detect the word hello. Oh, so happy, happy, that was the word. So if the word happy is in message.content, then we want to do this. So we want to react to the message. So let's first define the emoji that we want to react to, to react with apologies. And there's many, many ways in which we can do this. So then, I'm currently here on the Discord PY documentation and in terms of reacting to messages. And there are three ways in which we can define which emoji we want to react with, for our bot to react with. We, the first option is just literally entering the emoji into the code. Second way is by using Unicode. And the third way is by using basically a text version which basically tells you what the emoji is. However, this has to be specific, as in it can't just say thumbs up. It has to say thumbs up sign. You see what I'm saying here? It has to be the exact one. And well, I'll first leave a link in the description for this so you can have a look for yourself. But let's have, let's have a look at the emojis, at what, for example, the different Unicodes are for emojis. And apologies, let me just quickly explain what a Unicode is. Think of a Unicode, the best way I can think of explaining it is just like a small string of characters in which defines an emoji. It basically tells the computer what the emoji is without having to dis without having to physically display the image like this in the code. So let's have a look at the emojis. So then, I'm on a website here in which it has every single different emoji, how it's used in different operating systems, websites, and just native, their Unicode, and their description. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for this website where you can come to. So let's say we, you want your bot to react with a happy message with a smiley face like this. The Unicode for it is this here. This is what we'd want to paste into our code. However, let me quickly explain. So heading back to the documentation, as we can see here, the way we define the Unicode is by doing two single quotes with a backward slash and then the Unicode. Or we can define it by just actually inputting the emoji. And I'm going to be honest, the way I like doing it is actually by inputting the emoji. And well, this isn't properly the, this probably isn't the professional way of doing it. However, I like doing it because it just, you know, it spices up the code a bit. It makes it a bit more enjoyable to read. However, please feel more than free to use a Unicode, as that's the way I'd recommend you do it. So if we head back to the code, in our emoji section here, let's paste in that emoji that we just took, the smiley face emoji. Yeah, as you can see here, look, it does look a bit nicer when reading it. But as I said, I recommend you use the Unicode. And as we, um, as I just showed you, the way you use the Unicode is backwards slash and then the Unicode um, character. That's how we do it. So we now talked about how we actually define the emoji. Let's now get it to actually react to the message happy. So that's quite easy to do. All we have to do is do message dot add underscore reaction, open and close bracket, and then just define the emoji. And that's it. That is everything we need to do for our bot to react to the word happy with the happy face emoji. So let's try it. So we're in Discord here. And look, we can send a normal message. And as we've just done it, we can react to it and our bot will detect we reacted to it. Cool. All good. Let's now send the word happy. And we've got an error. And that, that is because of a very, very simple reason in which we've found out many times in this channel is that I cannot spell. And as you can see here, we have put three S's here. Well, we haven't, I have. So yeah, that is that is obviously my fault and I, ap I apologize. And yeah, that should all now work. Just make sure you can spell. Don't be like me. Anyway, let's head back. So hopefully I haven't made any more spelling mistakes and it should now work. So let's send happy. And look, there we go. Our bot reacted with the happy emoji. Look at this, if we go to reactions, bot reacted with smiley emoji. I have to admit, pretty cool how you can do that. I, I like doing that to messages. But yeah, also look at this. Our bot detected that it added its own reaction to, to a message, which is pretty cool. But in terms of getting your bot to react to messages, this is only one possibility in what you can do in terms of detecting a single word and reacting to it. There's loads and loads of other possibilities you can do with this knowledge that you've just learned. And well, now that's everything to do with reactions, everything we can do with our bots in terms of reactions. 
I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found something useful. If you have, please do give this video a like. It would help it out a lot, a lot in the YouTube algorithm. And it would help me out a lot. And I'd really appreciate it. And while you're down there, please do consider subscribing. But anyway, I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.